there are so many contentious issues that black people and poor people face in Omaha and so much that Omaha attempts to do ignores those groups or actually hurts them that I generally am on the opposite side of anything that Omaha brings down here. This, however, is one of those matters where the legislature should not jump into the middle of something which is based on a squabble. If the Bible was right, Senator Friend's tongue would have cleaved to the roof of his mouth and his right arm would have lost her cunning because if this has nothing to do with Elkhorn, then his name is not Friend. He knows it and when people have to deny what everybody else knows, you know there is no argument. They blundered in rushing that bill out to this floor. They did it partly as a favor and this is too serious a matter to be handled as a favor. Why do you think that I'd be speaking against something like this? But I'm going to tell you something since they want to talk about representation. White people are more homogeneous among themselves, speaking of white people in Elkhorn and those in Omaha, than black people in any group of white people. So let's break it down into those numbers. You would have nine people on the council, eight white people against one councilman who is black. Right now, we're outnumbered six to one. They want to make it eight against one. And then they want to talk about this representation. What kind of representation are they talking about? They can vote. Their interests overlap the interests of other white people. They parallel those interests. Sometimes they overlay directly. They will have representation. We all know that. So they use that word, but it does not apply when we're talking about other things of substance where representation really counts, such as the way OPS is administered. And these people up here fat-mouthing about representation don't really care about it at all where it counts. This is about Elkhorn. This is continuing a squabble. This is taking a finger and sticking it in the eyes of the legislature. And as for Jim Suttle, who came down there, he was with the planning department in Omaha when they split the black community with the freeway. And I held him off for several years down here and having committee meetings. We took several thousand signatures to the white city council at that time. And you know what they said? Anybody can get signatures but nobody could get that many against what they were doing. They destroyed our community. So I know the damage that can be done and how we don't count for anything. So when we talk about representation, let's bring it right down to where the rubber meets the road. Eight white people against one black person is far worse than six white people against one black person. And that is sometimes how it breaks down even now. There is racism in this society, and it's reflected in the people who are of the majority race. They support bad things that the police do in our community. Just the other day, there was an incident written about in the paper, although it occurred several weeks ago, where this white cop was menacing people with his pistol when he was in his private car. But it happened in a white neighborhood, so they fired him. If it happened in our neighborhood, they wouldn't even accept the call and take it seriously. One they minute. fired him on the word of a citizen, a white citizen, complaining to 911. They conducted an investigation, and cops, knowing that they are encouraged to lie, lied during that investigation like they do when we file a complaint as black people. They established that he was lying, and they fired him. That won't happen when it comes to things that happen in our community. That's where the lack of representation rears itself. It is in our situation as black people that we can say the representation that we have does not generate fairness, but it puts us in a position to have a meaningful voice. And one out of seven is more of a meaningful voice than one out of nine. If it hadn't been for Elkhorn, this wouldn't be before. Senator Friend has been the chair of that committee and has been a member of it, and he has never talked about expanding the size of the city council in Omaha or bringing a bill to do it. Neither has Senator Dwight Peterson. So this Fine. talk of representation is smoke. Thank you, Mr. President. Good question. Senator Friend. Yes, I will. Senator Friend, if this bill passes, 
who will draw the boundary, the district lines for these nine districts? The city council. The current city council? Yes. And how will people be, how will people wind up in the two additional districts wherever they happen to be? I would imagine it, would, it, it occurs the same way that it would with our previous, um, or at least or our current process. I think that they, they will get in there and vote on how those, um, uh, on how the council districts are, I wouldn't say gerrymandered, but created. So there's a, I, okay. I don't want you to use your imagination. I want you to use no, 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 your I know, I know, and that's why, and that's why I stopped. Okay. Are you going to withdraw everything that you said up to this point? One minute. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm saying that the city council will will use the process that they've always used since 2001 to create or to redraw those boundaries. So what you will have is this big new pie and the current city council will divide it into nine parts, correct? Which used to be the, correct, which used to be the election commissioner's job. It's so remember. now you have seven existing members, one in each of seven districts. How will you get the members for each of the two new districts? Where will they come from? It doesn't have to be Elkhorn. No, no, I meant how will they be, how will it be determined who the people are who will represent those two new districts? Depends on... Who will make that decision? Oh, the city council. Yeah. The city council will pick them. So if there's, this, if there's this dispute going on now, is this city council Time. likely to give Elkhorn what they want? Time, Senator Chambers. Probably not. Thank you, Mr. President. You are the next light. So. Yes, and then I'm going to ask for a division of the question because there are two parts here. One, to eliminate some obsolete language, which I don't disagree with but then the emergency clause, which I do disagree with because I don't support anything connected with this bill. So after I speak, then I'm going to see if I can, if it's necessary to approach to divide this question because I think it can easily be done. But here's the point in all of this that I see. Elkhorn is upset. To get back at Omaha, you changed the governing structure of the city that annexed you. No study of any consequence or significance to determine what the impact of that would be. Absorbing these relatively small numbers of people in the two areas that Senator Dwight Peterson mentioned has resulted in minimal adjusting of current boundaries for the City Council of Omaha. Districts 5 and 6 will represent between them the bulk of the people in the newly annexed area. People talk about what Elkhorn is entitled to, and they can talk about that as much as they want to, Senator Friend said this is a policy issue and we should discuss it and we will. I don't discount any of that. But the fact that they sent this bill out here, I think, is not a wise decision to have made. That committee has not looked at the demographics of Omaha. So they start in an ad hoc manner to jerry build certain arguments to justify what they're doing and now all of a sudden, Elkhorn has nothing to do with it. This bill is out here because Omaha is expanding to the west. I'm the one who years ago argued and mentioned to the people in Omaha and the representatives that they had better do something because Omaha was going to be ringed about and unable to expand at all. They couldn't expand to the south and take Sarpy County they were not going to go to the north and take Washington County, although some people might have wished Omaha would expand into the Missouri River. They were not going to do that. So the only direction was west. And if Omaha waited too long 
they could be ringed in by population groups large enough to prevent Omaha from annexing. So what is being done here is not unusual, it is not unheard of, and it should not be a surprise. The bitterness is there, but that does not justify altering the governing structure of the cities of the state's largest city. When a point is reached where the population is so large and the rep representation is so diluted, I would support increasing the size of the city council, but that point has not been reached. And contrary to what Senator Howard suggested, Southeast Omaha has representation. North Omaha, where I live, has representation, and we never had it before district elections. So she's talking about giving representation where it exists. Senator Stutman's up here talking about because 8,000 people come into the city, you should change the governing structure of the city because these people want it that way. One minute. That's not a sound argument. It's a sympathetic argument. It's a justification for making an unwise vote as a favor to somebody. But I live in Omaha, and I suffer where there is suffering from the problems that exist in that city. If I thought increasing the size of the city council would address them, I would have brought a bill. I brought the bill to bring district elections years running, and Senator Friend and nobody else, and they were old enough to say something about it, none of them participated, and most of the white people opposed it. Those on the city council opposed it, the mayor opposed it, the chamber of commerce opposed it, all of their friends opposed it, because they wanted to leave it like it is, like it was. And now all of a sudden you can get the impression that they were out there fighting like I am to try to get district elections, that they were concerned about representation. No, they were not. The way it went without us having any representation or South Omaha having any representation was all right with them. That was all right with them. This Time. is all about Elkhorn. And, Mr. President, I'd like a ruling as to whether this question can be divided. I think it can. Thank you, Senator Chambers. I have reviewed your request for division, and it is dividable into two sections, the first being the emergency clause and the second being the language change. And what you all are watching and what I'm experiencing is the sham paternalism of white people pretending to be concerned about increased minority representation. I am the embodiment of what they're supposed to be so concerned about, and you're not going to listen to me? My foot is the one in the vice, and you're going to listen to somebody else who might be turning that vice, telling you what it is that I'm experiencing? Do you think I want to diminish the representation of the people I'm concerned about? The short time that some of you have been here who were just elected, and the much longer time the rest of you, including Senator Stutman, have been here. Know what my thrust has been, not just for black people, but all of those marginalized groups. And these others who now suddenly pop up here talking about diversity should be taken with a grain of salt in terms of anything they say. Jim Suttle is not known, nor does he have a track record of showing concern about non-white groups. He helped engineer the splitting of North Omaha with that freeway, the destruction of a community, elderly people put out of their homes, the land taken, and they were not given enough money to purchase another home. You didn't get enough money to buy replacement housing. You got the value of that house, which they allowed to diminish by threatening to run that road through for several years. And by having that threat hold, held over the head of my community, no development occurred. The property there lost in value. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Then when it reached the nadir, here they come and start taking people's houses and split the community. And that was engineered by white people, and Jim Suttle had a heavy hand in it. And now he has changed, and he's interested in the representation of black people. A white man is going to say he knows what's best 
for people who are not like him in any way, you all cannot seem to understand how tiresome it is as a black person to constantly hear the paternalism of white people saying, we know what's best for you, and that's why we're going to do this whether you like it or not, because you don't know what we need. You need, but we know what you need, and we're going to give it to you whether you want it or not. So instead of you being outnumbered six to one, you're going to be outnumbered eight to one, and that's in your best interest. What are they talking about? They can talk as illogically and crazy as they want to when the interests of non-white people are at stake. I've never heard Senator Stupin say such a nonsensical thing since I've been in the, session, in the legislature with him. And I've worked with him on some issues. He knows better than what he said. There is no logic or sense to it. He's a politician. He probably even served on some governing board before he came down here. And to say that these few people that are coming into Omaha justify changing the whole governing structure of the city, creating two new council districts for a number of people who make an infinitesimally small percentage of any district. You wouldn't do that for black people. One minute. I'll cut a deal with you. Are you willing to make 23 districts? In Omaha, then black people can get more than one representative. Are you willing to do that if you're really interested in giving us something? Because y'all like to give us things. You know what's best for us. Are you willing to go for 23 districts? You'd say, H, no, that makes no sense. Because it doesn't fit what you all have in your plans. But I'm going to fight you because that's what I'm here for. And I'm one out of 49. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, thank you, Senator Mines. Members of the legislature, Senator Mines again brought us back to what we should be looking at. There has been no compelling reason given for altering the governing structure of Omaha. None whatsoever. You notice that those who are trying to carry the banner for Elkhorn have consistently and steadily tried to downplay that factor. But were that not the case, this bill, first of all, would not have been introduced. Secondly, it would not be on the floor of the legislature. To change the governing structure of a city, the largest city in the state, should not be done on a whim. It should not be done in a heat and a rush. There was a song with those words in it, and the activity being described although more pleasurable than what we're doing, certainly didn't approach the importance of what we're doing. Some things should not be done in a heat and a rush. Nobody in Omaha has asked for this. When I was pushing for district elections, there were literally thousands of people asking for it. One minute. This is just a knee-jerk reaction. And the people in Elkhorn are entitled to pressure Senator Peterson to bring something like this to us, but we don't have to react emotionally and in a knee-jerk fashion simply because he and they have done so. I have not said anything about the dispute and the squabbling between Omaha and Elkhorn. That's for them to deal with. It was going to be resolved in the courts, and it was. Now we have had this made into a legislative matter, and I think in behaving in a way that is deliberative and responsible. This legislature ought not vote to change radically the governing structure of the largest city. I keep referring to the size because there is so much involved in the demographics of that city which is known. Time, Senator Chambers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Mines and Senator Chambers. Um, and then would Senator Chambers yield to a question, please? Senator Chambers, would you yield to a question, please? Yes, I will. Um, Senator Chambers, are you aware how, may, could you explain, if you know, how Lincoln arrived at its structure? Did you have anything to do with, with that? No, they might have tailgated on some of the work I was doing for district elections, but I think Lincoln elects some by district and some at large, but I'm not sure. Okay, that, that's correct. I, Senator uh, Schimmick indicated that it might have had uh, 
an initiative uh, in the 70s, perhaps. But I, it, it helps to have some information of the past if we're going to be making decisions about the future. So um, toward that end, what was the structure of Omaha before you introduced uh, districts? Am I to assume that they were citywide at large? Yes. Okay. With, um, with the annexation of Elkhorn, it, it seems that this is, uh, that we have, since there is an added population, there could be a reasonable argument as to why there would need to be more representation. One minute. If, and since you, I see that you are against this, I'll ask if you could explain uh, at what point in the population do you believe it's reasonable to move forward with an increase in representation? Senator Fulton, I wouldn't just look at the numbers of people, I would look at the impact of additional population to see if it altered the power relationships within the city itself. And that's when I would begin to look at whether additional members ought to be added to the city council. So with further annexation, you wouldn't necessarily advocate adding uh, added representation. It's not so much a population number as it is uh, a, a political uh, extension within the city. Yes, those issues would all have to be considered, not just population alone. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Knowing that I was next, I can elaborate just a bit. Many times, population can have a great impact on the dynamics of a city's governance if the population consists of people who are going to be very active politically. If there would become a great imbalance in the power relationship, and by that I meant the fact that certain groups would have their representation diluted, then changes ought to be considered. But even should that become what appears to be the case, it should not be done willy-nilly. There should be careful evaluation, careful study, then impelling arguments given as to why. Not as Senator Friend told us when Senator Fulton asked him why the emergency clause. Senator Friend said, well, why not? I've seen emergency clauses on the craziest things. That's not really an answer that is of much, much assistance in our arriving at a responsible conclusion to this issue. I will repeat again what I had said earlier on a different bill. I ought to have used my tape recorder and recorded my comments because it was going to be necessary to repeat them again and again, and I just switch on the tape recorder, but I did not do it, so I will do the repeating myself. If I saw this as an issue of representation, fair representation, I would be leading the charge. That is not what is involved here. Senator Peterson cannot say that the people in Elkhorn are not going to receive political representation. He cannot say that the people in Elkhorn are going to be denied city services, police protection, fire service, or any of the other things that people who are parts of the city should be entitled to look at. But I right now can show that the area of the city in which I live is in fact deprived of these things which others take for granted in the parts of Omaha where they live. Senator Peterson is not able to say in Elkhorn they're not going to have decent schools. I can show you what's happening in the schools in my area. I'm talking about a reality and they're talking theory. They're speaking academically and theoretically and emotionally because some people are angry and sore that their area was annexed by Omaha. That's what this is about. And you're going to change the governing structure of this city. Even if you do, you're not going to give them what Senator Peterson and Senator Friend keep talking about. What do they mean by representation? That they can put somebody on the city council with their vote alone? They have never said that. Even Senator Stutman said that maybe they can't get even somebody from their area elected to the city council. And maybe they can. But those people in Elkhorn will have far more in common with the white people in the rest of the part of Omaha 
than my people would have with those white people. You can't draw a line between Elkhorn and Omaha and say on one side of this line is Elkhorn and on the other side is Omaha and the people on that side in Elkhorn don't go to the movies in Omaha, they don't go to the restaurants in Omaha, they don't work in Omaha, they don't drive down the streets of Omaha, One in minute. fact they don't blend in with Omaha, that's not what happens, they in fact do all of these things they are in practical effect a part of Omaha right now, a functioning part of Omaha they simply don't live there but they have better access to things in Omaha than people of my complexion have right now. So, there is a reality and there is an appearance. I want us to look at the reality. And with all of the faults, the warts, and the bumps, and the blisters that the city of Omaha displays, its governing structure should not be altered in the way that this bill is suggesting. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Senator Preister, and I'd like to ask Senator Friend a question or two. Senator Friend, would you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? Yes. Senator Friend, how long, if you know, has the legislature consisted of 49 members? I, I don't know, Senator okay. Chambers. How many members are authorized for the legislature to have under the Constitution? right now no more than 49 or no more than 50 I don't know all I did was looked at him and changed him three times but we can have so what's the answer we can have as many as 50 I want to ask you a question are there more people in Nebraska now than there were 10 years ago barely I believe Say it again. Not very many more. I mean, we're not growing at, a, at a, as rapid a pace as Omaha in itself is. Do you have any idea roughly how many more now than 10 years ago? Well, let me ask you no. differently. Do you think there are more people in Nebraska now than there were 37 years ago when I came into the legislature? I don't know, but I wouldn't say that that would necessarily be the case. But that, I'm not sure. Your Honor, that's all I have of this witness. Thank you. That, thank you, Senator Friend. Now, he's the one who's, who's lecturing us, explaining everything to us, and now you can see why he talks about other cities, huh, and other places, because you don't know whether he's accurate or not. Well, right here at home, it often happens that we don't take the time to see how things are going here and maybe speculate as to whether or not we ought not increase the number of members in the legislature to 50, then there might be less large areas, fewer large areas for some of these senators to represent. But nobody is recommending that that be done. That committee which sent this bill out here made a mistake, in my opinion. A committee can send anything out here it chooses. But I'm going to be like poor Johnny One Note, and I'm going to say it over and over and over. There has been no compelling reason given why this legislature, without knowing the demographics of the city of Omaha, the dynamics of how that city functions, anything about its operation would change the governing structure. There are tie votes even when the total number of a governing body ends in an odd number rather than even. There still are tie votes. Sometimes the person is absent, sometimes one or others will abstain. Having tie votes can occur under any and all circumstances, and sometimes they're engineered so people on both sides can say no action could be taken. One minute. I would like to ask a question of Senator, oh, Senator Stutman's gone. I'd like to ask Senator Stutman a question. Senator Stutman. Senator Stutman, would you yield to a question? Yes. Senator Stutman, in the case of a tie on the city council in Omaha right now, does the mayor vote to break the tie if he chooses? Yes. I'd like to ask Senator Friend a question. Senator Friend, Senator does the mayor... Senator Friend, would you yield to a question? Yes, I will. Does the mayor ever have a right to vote in the city council in Omaha? 
Uh, no, it, it, he, it's a seven-person city council, so there, there's no need. So if there's a tie, is the mayor allowed to break the tie? I think so. But you're not sure? I'm not sure. Thank you, Mr. Expert. Thank you, Mr. President. And I will not give the answer. Check it out. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Schimmick. Members of the legislature, and I see Senator Friend running out of here. You know what he said the last time he stood up? He made a few comments, and then he said, what I just heard was, I don't know who said this, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Well, what he had just heard was what he had just said. So he never spoke more truth in the time that he's been here on the floor of this legislature. But that wasn't the only time. That's the only time he actually listened to what he was saying. He said, good God Almighty, this is full of sound and fury signifying nothing. He was right at that time. But everything else he said was off the mark. That committee should not have sent this bill out here. There are some issues which I think are of sufficient gravity to justify having the legislature discuss that issue. But I will make that clear when I've done something like that. It's not where I'm not convinced that something has merit, then I get out here because I voted for it, and then I have to try to justify a bad vote. I simply say, I made a bad vote. I did not take everything into consideration, and although I voted to bring it out here, I'm against it. And my better judgment tells me that I was wrong, and I'm going to vote in accord with my better judgment rather than with a foolish stubbornness. People can listen to what we say. They can tell if we know what we're talking about. They can tell if we don't. Why should Senator Stutman be expected to know how the government of Omaha operates in terms of whether the mayor can vote to break a tire or not? He doesn't live in Omaha. He doesn't appear before the city council. He doesn't watch their proceedings. So he might be inclined to figure that the way it happens in his city is the way it happens other places. And in his city, the mayor can vote to break a tie when there is one in the city council. I say we should be state senators, and I do inform myself to the extent I can of what's going on in other parts of the state, but I don't know everything, so if there's an issue that I need enlightenment on, I will go to the senator in that area and see whether or not he or she can improve my education. I wish I knew everything, but I'm glad I got enough sense to know that I don't know everything, that I must seek information elsewhere. But one thing I do know for sure, that is, first of all, this emergency clause, because that's what's before us, ought not be adopted. Haste makes waste. This bill is not even understood. I will not do it to Senator Peterson. I will not do it to my friend, Senator Friend. But I could ask them to take the underlying language in this bill and the sections that are cross-referenced and explain to me what they say, what they mean, and what those statutes that are cross-referenced have to say and their relevance to what we're doing here, and they couldn't tell me. They couldn't tell me. Now, if I said that about Senator Stutman, he'd go get the information, and then he would tell me. But they won't, because they don't have to, because nobody cares. There'll be a friendship vote, and that should not be given on the floor of this legislature on a measure such as this. Now, if in honor of some particular kind of fish in a stream somewhere, one of our colleagues said, I would like a resolution from the legislature acknowledging that the paddlefish is a One good minute. creature and things of that kind. A resolution is nothing. It's where we show collegiality. And nobody's going to read it except maybe some newspaper reporter or columnist who will want to make a joke about what the legislature did. But this is not a resolution. This is a statute to be. And we should not do what we're being asked to do here. I hope we'll start taking control of this matter by voting no on the first division of this question, 
which is adoption of the emergency clause. It's ill-advised, and I hope we will vote it down. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. And I liked his phraseology. He said, and those wishing to speak, Senator Chambers, plural. I'm going to support this amendment. It is the only appropriate thing to do because it's removing language that ought not to have been drafted into the statute in view of the fact that there has been a change of circumstances. That language was in the original statutory scheme that is being amended here because it told the methodology that would be followed when the city of Omaha was divided into seven districts in the first instance. That language no longer applies because subsequent to that, legislation was enacted that gave the authority to redraw district boundaries to the city council. If that old language had been offered as new language, it would have been in conflict with the requirement that the city council draw those boundaries. There is new language in this statute that acknowledges that the city council will do the redrawing. So Senator Friend's amendment is going to eliminate what ought not to have been there in the first instance. And although I'm going to support it, I'm going to use it as an opportunity to address a few issues. Senator Karpacek said that I'm interested in my people, Senator Preister is interested in his, and he applauds Senator Peterson for being interested in his. But if Senator Karpacek had been listening, I would have pointed out, I did point out, and he would have heard that I don't want to see the structure that governs Omaha altered. Despite the serious, contentious differences I have with the city of Omaha, I don't want that governing structure altered on a whim. Then, because they were talking so much, Senator Karpacek, about representation where it doesn't apply at all in the case of Elkhorn, I said, I will tell you something about representation. And that's when I brought up my district. Senator Karpacek hasn't been here long, and he's expressing what he believes. But there's a history between how and why district elections took place in Omaha. Not because white people in Omaha wanted it. When it was put to a vote to try to derail me, they voted against it three times and wanted to use that when I came to the legislature to say the people don't want it. And what the senator said, well, the white people don't want it. That's why he's bringing his bill. These votes prove the truth of what he said, and they voted for district elections. We had no voice on the city council in the history of the city of Omaha until I got district elections. You cannot compare the circumstances of any white group in this city with what in this state with what has happened to us. Totally impossible. When I talk about the schools and our not having representation, meaning black people, Latinos, poor white people, Native Americans, we can point out the defects of the system that exists now because they are manifested in the lack of opportunity given to our children. The poorest teachers, those with the lesser experience, inadequate supplies, textbooks not available during the first couple of months of school. That doesn't happen in white schools. The school has no copying machine, so one of the banks has to provide it. That doesn't happen in white schools. Failing on the examinations, the tests that are given. One minute. Increasing segregation. I give specifics. Elkhorn can't give you anything except white people saying they want representation because they're white. They can't show that they've been deprived of any city service or anything else. So when you draw a comparison, make sure you know what you're talking about, which you don't now. But you have a right to stand up and express opinions on something about which you're profoundly ignorant. That's what being in the legislature means, and that's what you just did. But I'm going to keep bringing us back to the fact that when you talk about what I'm discussing, you need to find out what it is, and you can find out by listening, which you don't do. This is a bad bill because it would change the governing structure of the, city, the state's largest city without there being a compelling reason to do so. Thank you, Mr. President.
Mr. President, members of the legislature, I don't know what is the matter with Senator Friend. I've already said I'm going to vote for his amendment. That guarantees its passage. He's standing up here acting like the world's going to come to an end. Well, I want to reconstruct his world for him. Senator Friend, I'm going to vote for your amendment, and I explained in more detail than you did why the amendment has to be adopted and what kind of conflict exists if it's not. But here's what I want to ask you. What do you have against Senator Harms, Senator, Senator Friend? Senator Friend, would you yield to a question? Yeah, yes, I will. I don't have anything against Senator Harms. I just forgot to mention him. I don't, I don't know if he was sitting there when I, when I uh, scoped around the room. You forgot I, to mention him. I was, looking, I was looking at people around the room and just picking names. Well, he was sitting there. I watched him. Well, I, I missed him. I, I think I saw a pained look come over his face. I will apologize to Senator Harms to his face because he'll be here too. And I think you gave Senator Gay's first name. Why was that? You didn't give the first names of other people. I if did. you're going to give a first name, you should have talked about our sister, Annette Dubaz. But you just gave her last name. If you're going to give last names, let it be the men. If you're going to give a first name, give the sister's first name. Why was that, Senator Friend? You are upset now, aren't you? No, I'm not. Actually, I'll answer that, but, I, but um, if you could allow me a little bit of leeway. I yes. was in a meeting, and I didn't hear you explain my amendment. I apologize. So thank you for doing that. But you haven't explained what you have against Senator Harms yet. You want to evade that issue, don't you? Is he here right now? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain it. I, it's between me and Senator Harms, Senator Chambers. So that's what I want to find out, what's the problem, and maybe I can pour oil over those troubled waters and straighten it out. Yeah, I'm sure you can. So what is the problem? I don't know. You'd rather not mention it, okay? No, 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 I Sen don't know. Sen oh, okay. I really don't know. Senator Friend, yeah. you had begun to indicate that the time may not be appropriate for this bill. The Maybe timing not. may not be appropriate. In line with that concession, what is magical about the number 57,000 which you keep mentioning? Is there something that says if a representative has 57,000 constituents, that representative cannot properly represent those people or that you just said that yourself no I just think that 57 is an awful lot I think for a city council in regard to city council representation 57,000 is an awful lot of people to represent I think it's too many I have why? I've thought that for quite a while why on what basis because I think city councils are different than legislatures and 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 the representation the charter the the ideas that come out of those bodies are different, and I think that that's important. I think I think that it's a. But I think do, I think you should be more grassroots. What a, does the number of people represented have to do at all with what you just got through saying? Well, I think I think that a more manageable number is a little easier to represent from a grassroots standpoint. Who has to manage them? The representative or somebody else? Well, the representative. Well, the representatives are not complaining about this, so why should you? Well, let me. I, ask I just think it's poor theory. I, I, I think that just because they're not complaining doesn't mean that it's not that, that it's an efficient way to do business. Did you hear me at any time suggest that the current council members are doing a great job? No, I did not. Did you hear me at any time mention what this might cost? In terms of dollars, uh, no, and I don't think that I, okay. I uh, made that. Um, so, well, you, know, you just made a general statement that you yeah. know discussing those things. Yeah. But here is the thing that I said earlier. One minute. A point could be reached when, if there is increased population as a result of annexation, and it resulted in a dilution of the voting strength of various identifiable groups in the city there would be time enough then to consider after serious study whether or not it's necessary to alter the governing structure by increasing the number of people on the council. I'm not going to say that will never happen. I did not say it would never happen. I said that is not the case now and had Elkhorn not been in the mix, this bill would not be before us and 57,000 would not all of a sudden be a number that's unwieldy in terms of how many people are represented by each member of Omaha City Council. That issue has never been raised by anybody, and even your saying it doesn't mean that it's an issue. 
It's an issue in the sense of something being discussed by Time. us, but not in the sense of an issue having merit. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Members of the legislature, I support this amendment. I'm not so opposed to this bill that I will vote against any and everything offered. As Senator Friend stated, if this amendment is not adopted, the bill may as well die. That is not the strategy that I am embarking on. I said when I first stood up that I will vote for this amendment, that it is necessary, but the bill is not. And Senator Friend and Senator Peterson will get a vote on their bill today, if they're willing to stay here till 11.59 p.m. He was listening to that, and that was said in jest by me, because we'll adjourn before then. Later in the session, I may say it jestingly, but some people may get heartburn as they see that those digits say five zero zero then six zero zero then seven eight and then they'll begin to say good lord when are we getting out of here and i'll just be getting into my zone then i might even sing a song or two to try and pep up the the, the team and get us back into what it is we're doing i don't think the discussion has been wasted Senator Friend is correct when he says this is a subject serious enough to be discussed. I think it should not have been brought out here if the committee were doing its job, but I'm not a member of that committee. Their bills, the Judiciary Committee, of which I am a member, will send bills out that I disagree with and I'll fight them on the floor. This, just because it constitutes an issue worthy of discussion, does not mean we ought to vote to do it. Senator Karpacek, every bill that we consider is going to affect some city somewhere. So I do believe there are times when the state should act, even if one city happens to be involved. And the Supreme Court has mentioned that when a matter is of statewide concern, that's when the legislature can act, even if its action impacts one individual city. The issue has to be of statewide concern. And we can sense when those things have arrived, when they're before us. And if that is not possible to be done, I will inform the body when I think that is the situation. But in this case, I do not think that the governing structure of this city should be altered. I would be the last one to say these people have done a good job. They refuse to name a little neighborhood park after me because they don't like my politics. Even though the people in that community jumped through all of the hoops that the city itself laid down, the planning department agreed, the parks department agreed, the mayor agreed, but those several of those council members said, we don't like him and we're not going to let the neighborhood do it. And I think that was racism, pure and simple, because they were continuing to name parks and streets after white people. That's the city that I live in. I could have gotten the legislature to do things to fix them because there were actions some of the senators wanted to take against Omaha and they just wanted me to lead the way. But I said that is not why or how I will get them. If I wanted to fix them, wouldn't this be the time to support something that all of the councilmen are against? Wouldn't it? But the responsibility goes beyond how I feel about any individual or group on that city council. One minute. And I think the right thing for the legislature to do is to leave what is currently well enough alone. Senator Friend keeps mentioning the number 57,000. Nothing magical about that number. Nobody has said that these council persons are not doing their job effectively because of the number of people they represent. When they attack one or some of them, it's on the basis of a vote they gave or didn't give or a position they took or didn't take, but not because of the number of people they represent. I'm going to support this amendment, but I still will not support the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. And thank you, Senator Shemek. Since Senator Mines is going to pull his amendment and there are some issues he wants to raise, I'm going to go back 
to what we were talking about on the City Council of Omaha. But before doing that, the, city, the Douglas County Board was elected at large also. We never had a black person on the Douglas County Board. So I struggled and fought and fought and then fought some more and persuaded the legislature to require the election of Douglas County Board members by district. Yeah, I'm the father of district elections in Omaha. I got district elections for the school board, for the city council, for the county board, and if you want to go on your website, you'll see that no, senate, no, no politician has done that anywhere in the country ever. 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 I repeat, not ever. You all have a political treasure in your midst and you don't recognize it. You could learn a lot from me if you would take the time. There was a professor of politics who said that if they were wise at any of these universities, they would have me to teach because from my track record, which he studied, he couldn't believe it after he read it. He had seen in all of his review and surveys of the country of America anybody who had done the multiple things that I had done. I should say the multiplicity. The knowledge of how to be outnumbered and still get things accomplished that others were afraid to even introduce. My record speaks for itself. And I don't boast, I state facts. And when people challenge me, I say, I'm glad you put me to the test. Go look at the record. And you will say of me what was said by a well-known person of history about Solomon. The half was not told to me. I just don't spend a lot of time telling you all these things. But my work not only is hard, but I get things done. And they become models not only for other states, but for the U.S. government in enacting legislation. That's my record. I know something about representative government. And I know something about representation. And I know that white people are not situated as black people are. The people, even in Millard or wherever that place was, as Senator Pauls mentioned, were not situated as my people are situated right now and always have been. There was a man of my complexion, although he was from Ethiopia, more recently than my people came over here from the mother country. And in a racist part of Omaha, they burned his store. The governor didn't say anything about it. Mayor didn't say anything about it. But if there had been a white store in a black community and black people burned it and tied the proprietor up with duct tape and set the store afire with that white man in it, there would have been an outcry all over this state. I know because I've been here all these years. We as black people don't count. But because of what has happened to us, and I know there are certain elements in the white community who don't have representation, I will speak for those white groups and entities. One minute. When a white farmer was shot dead by the state patrol, I'm the one who spoke up for him and put so much pressure they had to conduct an investigation. And they changed the way they deal with people with whom they're having a standoff. Not because of white people, not because of white representatives. They went along with the program and said, well, he obviously did something wrong or the state patrol wouldn't have killed him. Fortunately for a lot of white people, I am not like white people. And you better pray that I don't become like white people and do to them only what they've done to us. And when I say that, First thing white people say, oh no, Ernie, you shouldn't do that. Only when I say, I want to see done to white people what white people have done to us. That's how they, in a backhand way, acknowledge how wrong they've been in their treatment of us. Thank you, Mr. President.